he's been in a lot of uh, big time battles. You know, he's 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 been he's Rose Bowl tested, Cotton Bowl tested. He's been in some Big Ten championship games. He's been in a lot of dog fights. Um, I just saw the stat. He's he's the career leader right now in wins, but it's not like they've been rolling by 40 each week. So there's quite a few games he's had to kind of dig them out of the ditch, uh, battle all the way through four quarters. Um, you know, it, it has not been downhill, which I think is a testament to how tough he is and how tough that, that team has been over there. So this will certainly be a big opportunity for him. You know, just talking to him the last couple of days, I know he's excited about it, but I don't... Uh, I don't know if it supersedes the, the challenges he's already had. He's, he's suited for tomorrow. Is there anything that, that, that Michigan does on defense that might pose particular problems, or alternatively, you might give him special opportunities given his skill set? Yeah, sure. Um, he's playing the best defense in the nation. I couldn't even name a second. I know statistically it's Alabama, but it just doesn't seem like that. Um, a quarterback's best friend is his run game. Because he can obviously turn and work off the run game, and you can play action off the run game. You can keep people from blitzing and coming off the edges so hard because they have to concentrate on somebody else behind you. Michigan's done a great job of eliminating that for the last three quarterbacks they played, really just about every quarterback they played this year, except when they went on the road at Utah. So <clears throat> seeing as though they've remedied that, that's going to be, I think, the Spartans' you know, job, you know, job number one. Is to at least make you know make gains on the ground where you can, and then you know you can get those guys occupied, and then you can start taking your shots because if they lay their ears back, it's going to be a very long four quarters. How do you evaluate Jake Rudock? Not, not <clears throat> great physical tools, I don't think, and certainly not a great arm. But what does he do well? Uh, I think he's exactly what Michigan needs right now. He's he's stabilized the position, which. The entire country thought, man, they, they were calling for him, or the camera kept panning down to the second, third quarterback at the Utah game, and his interceptions were examined, you know, like it was in some type of autopsy or something. And then week two, he gets a little better. Week three, he gets better. And you need time. He just got here. So, you know, like anybody that, you know, switching colleges or switching majors, I mean, he's now here. He's learning as fast as he can, but he just happens to be learning in a very high-profile, you know, school situation, et cetera. So he's got two NFL coaches working with him day in and day out, and Coach Harbaugh and Coach Fish, you know, which I think is, is probably one of the best batteries in, in, in football. Um, you know, both very you know, experienced, and both are teachers. A lot of people coach. They bark tactical information at you, but these guys do an awful lot of teaching how and why. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been great taking direction. And you've seen what he's been able to do. And I think he's very self-aware. If I'm able to just mitigate damage on my side as a quarterback, that defense is going to really take care of a lot of other things. And so if he can play to that defense and keep doing what they ask him to do and, you know, make good, decisive decisions, that sounded funny, be decisive and make good decisions, uh, he's going to keep putting them in position to – to do what they ultimately want to do, which is finishing that final four. That's a real thing right now for them. Cook, you, kind, of, Cook kind of started the season almost in the opposite place as Rudolph. Has he been, you know, they're undefeated, but has he been living up to the expectations? No, no. And, and I'll, uh, I'll be the first one to say that. I, I've been around Connor for years. Um, he is not... I'm sure he's not where he wants to be either, except for the win-loss column, which should be pretty scary for Michigan State opponents coming down the line. That offense hasn't been its best. He hasn't been his best yet, and yet they've been winning. And as soon as he does settle down, and they've sustained a lot of injuries over there, so he's welcoming new guys in and out of the huddle, different offensive linemen. He's got a couple of mainstays in there, like Aaron Burbridge in the back. Um, you know, and he's and he, for the most part, I mean, he hasn't looked Connor Cook esque, but he hasn't made a ton of mistakes either. So it'd be exciting to see him start to hit his stride and get going. There's a reason why they're a top team in the country, um, and they still have an awful lot of room on offense to kind of, you know, fill into who they actually are, who you know, who we all think they are. 
But to answer your question, no, he hasn't been Connor Cook yet. For them to have only given up, I think, four sacks on the season with all those injuries on the offensive line, is that really his doing? That's what, yes. Why? Yes, it is. And, and not to cut your question off, um, with all that offensive line changeover and they have such few sacks, that, that is um, big for Connor. One of the coolest statistics I remember about Andrew Luck when I got a chance to finally work with him is how few sacks he had his final year at Stanford. It was like six or seven. That's an awful lot on the quarterback. Pre-snap, are we in a bad situation? Let me get us out of it. Pre-snap, I see an awful lot of pressure coming. I need to get an idea and a plan in place when this ball is snapped to get out of here. Working well within the pocket, knowing the difference between pressure when your own linemen are pushed back to you and danger when somebody's coming free defensively towards you. I think he's been doing a great job of that. Um, to, answer your, to answer her question again, um, his accuracy and consistency throwing the ball and his rhythm and timing are still working their way into play, but he's done a great job of orchestrating back there between the tackles, and that's taken a lot of pressure off those, those linemen. And, you know, a younger guy or a less experienced guy, you know, they would have some struggles, but he's been able to mask a lot of that just with his experience. George, you've known Harbaugh for years, and you were here in the spring. Yep. What are the things he's done to make this happen so quickly? He, he, he's first, he's one of my favorite coaches, um, really one of my favorite people. Um, he, he's been a mentor. You know, I've been around coach for, for almost 10 years, and he's done the same thing here that he did at USD, University of San Diego, and Stanford and San Francisco. He has really uh, imposed his enthusiasm and drive into the program first. So before... You know, it's personnel, and before it comes down to scheme and X's and O's, you, they have to know they're, you have to insert this alpha dog up front. And an alpha dog up front with any pack, you know, it could be a pack of Labradors or a pack of Wolves. If an alpha rolls in there, they just change. Everybody changes in that whole crew, and that's what's happened here, and I think that's job one. And to instill that mentality of just, listen, we're physical, you know, no one's going to outwork us. Uh, we're going to be relentless. And you can see it even against Utah, which now that loss doesn't seem, you know, that over the top. We had, what, four or five turnovers. You're on the road, home opener, new quarterback, quite a few new faces in the huddle. And they left out of there losing by a touchdown. And the whole game, you just saw guys flying to the ball on defense. Guys finishing blocks and tackles way downfield on offense. Runners running hard, playing, you know, playing through the whistle. It's the embodiment of that, you know, I'd almost say some of those hardball elements that have got them this far. And now everything else is starting to click up underneath that. And so now they have an identity, especially now that defense has kind of stepped up and kind of broken through. Uh, this team is going to be tough. And, yeah, I did expect Michigan to have – an immense amount of success, as did the guy coming up these steps here. Uh, but no, it's no surprise to me. I'm, I'm excited for him. It makes college football better. Doesn't Desmond always think Michigan's going to have a good season? Desmond, oh, he does always think Michigan's going to have a great season. Am I speaking correctly? <laughs> yeah, he does. He, he's a he's a true fan, but he's you know he's always very honest too. Though years past, he, he did not look at it like that. But I, I just don't think you can uh, overstate the alpha impact here. You know, you have really nice coaches, you have very, uh, you know, well-traveled and, and uh, you know, experienced guys and guys that come in with 12-pound playbooks. But just the fact that every single kid in that building understands who our leader is, what direction we're going, what he expects from me, and it's, you know, it's infectious. They all, I'm sure the kickers and punters go through some kind of crazy ritual before they hit the field here. It's not, you know, the trainers and the ball boys probably, they, I mean, they're probably wearing face paint when they hit the field. I mean, it's a, it's a different animal here if you get that type of alpha inserted up front. And that's unusual. Have you seen that? You've gone to a lot of places now. Like I've gone to a lot of places. Uh, you see that, and, and I don't think it's, you know, it's a mystery why certain, you know, programs, you know, find success and sustain it early. 
this is the same thing that happened at Ohio State with Coach Meyer. You know, they were, you know, kind of finding themselves and moving through, and, and then in comes Coach Meyer, and then all of a sudden that spine turns to iron. Um, same thing you, we've been seeing down in Alabama. Uh, Coach Carroll had this same type of thing in USC. They can have different personalities, but there's, you know, there's no question who the, you know, who that alpha, who the, who the general is up front. And I don't mean that in terms of position. I mean that just in terms of being able to feel somebody in practice, in meetings, um, you know, what his body language says, what his attitude is like. You, you've seen how enthusiastic some coaches come in, they clock in to work, they clock out, they expect you to be the same. Others, like coach, uh, they, they come in, it's almost a tornado type feel. You know he's been in the building. There is no such thing as I don't know if Coach Harbaugh is here or not. You know if he's here. You know where he is on the field at all times in practice. And I think those guys needed that. They want to win here, and he wants to win, you know, more than anyone. So if I'm 17, 18, 19, and I'm looking as a recruit, uh, I don't know how this isn't going to be at the top of, of, of most kids' list, you know, in the Midwest, even national. Would you categorize D'Antonio as an alpha? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, you know, just a different kind. His mentality is just a little bit, you know, they, they have different personalities, but another alpha. And when a coach says... With no problems, I embrace the hate. You know, I'm not going to be, quote, politically correct and walk around it or say something friendly or deferential. He says, no, I, am, I embrace the hate. This is good for us. And I'm, if he says that publicly, you know what, what he passes on to his own guys when it's just them and their own meetings. So you love that. There's a lot of alphas starting to come in here to the Big Ten. And I think they're going to start overtaking the SEC.